Human Behavior is Culture was captured and framed in 15 chapters in publication 293 and verbalized in podcast 161 in ISBN 9789769689374. After much cogitation of King Francis I uttering according to Wikipedia Org. I quote, The sun shines for me as it does for others. I would very much like to see the clause of Adams's will by which I should be denied my share of the new world. End quote. According to BritishEmpire.co.uk, I quote, The economic well-being of the Caribbean colonies was more important than that of the American colonies. The small sugar islands were producing disproportionately more wealth for their size than any of the Northern American colonies." End quote. As an author, cinematographer, media art specialist, licensed cultural practitioner, publisher, and doctoral student, I reframed with my macro lens the authors of the aforesaid alleged utterances. At the end of this exercise, I saw human behavior, hierarchy, cultural expression, identity, race, uncertainty, avoidance, individualism, gender, short-term orientation, and the history of colonialism. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy defines colonialism, I quote, as a practice or policy of control by one people or power over another people or areas, often by establishing colonies and generally with the aim of economic dominance." End quote. During the navigational process, research, and analysis, I discovered that the scope and the contrast of these notions inspired me to juxtapose the aforesaid alleged utterances against each other. This policy is a complex ongoing cultural process. Such a policy dominated populations. The same are represented in ways that play upon and legitimize racial and cultural differences for decades, according to Princeton.edu. This thinking caused two reactions. A, I was inspired to posit the theory, human behavior is culture. And B, the authors of these policies presumably viewed the world, I quote, through their own lenses, and it is highly plausible that rarely did they see more than their mind allowed them. End quote. A view espoused by Michael F. K. I must confess that as a licensed cultural practitioner and doctoral student, I usually seek to continue education and therefore, given the volume of cogitation on this matter, I am discerning that according to psychologytoday.com, I quote, my brain has fixed my lenses only to pick up the familiar and comfortable occurrence, end quote within this genre, caption culture. Edward Tylor defines culture, I quote, as an umbrella term which encompasses the social behavior, institutions, and norms found in human societies, as well as the knowledge, beliefs, arts, laws, customs, capabilities, and habits of the individuals in these groups. End quote. This activity 
adds to my skills and offers me new insight into knowledge. It gave me time to make and share which was truly engaging and enriching my creative and cultural experiences with others because I am always navigating between cultural texts. In this context, I am in a better position to utilize the said knowledge and strategies. The same can be described as cognition because it allowed me to engage my analytical abilities. For example, it stimulated memories and even broadened my passion the more that I read words from several cultural pages. The more that I drilled down, I discovered that, according to dictionary.com, I quote, there is a hierarchical organization by which a society or community is divided into classes. For instance, when war produce not only spoils such as gold, but also people to take as slaves, which eventually became a form of status symbol. The more slaves you had, the wealthier and the more influenced you were." End quote. Therefore, slaves became very critical to this cultural discourse. As a matter of fact, slaves were classified on the different classes of their society within their community and divided into classes. For example, these classes included chattel, bonded, force, labor, and sexual slavery. In other words, they had the loss of freedom of movement and legal rights. End quote. This human behavior, namely slavery, according to the history press, I quote, this action is playing a role in shaping culture, gender, and age groups. This behavior is only in recent times that it has been globally outlawed with the United Nations General Assembly, adopting the Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 that specified that freedom from slavery is a universal human right and it is to be prohibited in all forms." End quote. It should be noted that according to journals, I quote, the individual's social class is a cultural identity constituted by two processes. Specifically, a person's objective social class or objective resources is signaled via symbols of wealth, preferences, and social behaviors. This includes manners and language use." End quote. Given the specifics of this subject, it is logical to assume, therefore, that slavery is also part of culture, and humans are the conduits whereby it is expressed as human behavior and classified as a class structure. Another critical component of this discourse, which solidified human behavior as culture, is the location where this policy, captioned under cultural historical events, was staged. According to wikipedia.org, the said events were staged within the precincts, I quote, of the Phoenicians, the Greeks, the Turks, and the Arabs, Barbados, Iberian, the Americas, Europe, Netherlands, France, England, Northern European countries, Spanish Eastern Seaboard of the United States and Canada, or islands in the Caribbean, such as Aruba and Martinique." End quote. 
This scholarly conversation is about a genre of various opinions of experts, studies and writings, and the various reactions and an insight of cultural practitioners. It is because of their behavior I am now acquiring knowledge about this topic and a lived experience for the authors. This policy was examined in a philosophized context. This cultural criticism and critical analysis is a tool which certainly helped in providing the detailed examination and evaluation of these authors' alleged utterances captured in this forum. Succinctly put, the same is just another critical lens through which I have chosen to discourse this textual analysis, cultural criticism, since it is one of the most important methods in literary studies. Now that I have contextualized and textualized this scholarly conversation, according to users PSMT, I quote, if we do not see the lens through which we are looking, end quote, especially human behavior is culture, then according to Michael F. K., I quote, we would see the sphere through our own lenses, but rarely do we see more than our mind will allow us, end quote. This thinking would allow us to determine and establish, according to psychologytoday.com, I quote, whether our brain has fixed our lenses only to pick up the familiar and the comfortable occurrence, end quote. This literary device, which behaves as a narrative, should not conflate the issue, but explicitly without reservation on earth detail information of lived experiences concerning behaviors of the past in this modernity era. These processes and practices interacting reflected the distinctive explicitness of human behavior as culture. I must confess that as a licensed cultural practitioner and doctoral student, I see these complex statements acted out through human behavior. Finally, what is uniquely interesting, these processes and practices combined reflect the distinctive explicitness of human behavior acting as a team of societal aspects which speaks to the doctrine of acculturation, cultural identity, customs, demography, educational culture, institutions, language, norms, organizations, parishes, plantations, products, religion, rules, symbolism, technologies, tools, traditions, and values. Consequently, when the proverbial dust is settled, human behavior is culture was captured and framed in 15 chapters in publication 293 and verbalized in podcast 161 in ISBN 978-976-9689374.